right, perfect. Well, hello, welcome everybody. We are so thrilled to have you here for this very special webinar Wednesday. This is actually our very first of a brand new webinar Wednesday series. And we're excited to share these destinations with you um, and some of our great tour directors that we get to work with um, and send our clients out to these amazing destinations with. So this is just a, a wonderful opportunity and we're, we're thrilled that you guys are, are joining us whether or not you're booked on the uh, historic Rome Explorer tour with Roger, not anybody who's planning a tour to Rome um, or to Florence or to Naples, I think we'll we'll find a, um, some fun facts that we're going to be sharing with you. So just as an official introduction, my name is Wendy Fracchia. I'm the operations manager and the director of tour operations for Morris Columbus Tours or Morris Columbus Travel, that's still a fairly new name for us. Um, our tour division is Morris Murdoch Escorted Tours. And again, we're just thrilled to have you with us. So um, again, as I mentioned, we've got Roger Manning with us. Roger, you've been doing tours with us for, I don't know how, when, when do you think you did your very first tour? Let's just go oh, back to your first tour, not even with yeah. us, but first okay. tour. Well, Back in 1993 or 92, I was asked by the church to. Um, and if you are not a member uh, of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, this is the church that we are referring to. OK, I'm sorry. Sorry. Just being being yeah. being fully. Uh, what's that yeah, word? Since, uh, yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. So uh, 1992, I was asked to uh, train to be a, a tour director through uh, BYU travel study where we visited places in Mesoamerica like Mexico, Mexico, south into the Yucatan and Guatemala, Belize, also into Central America. That was a wonderful experience and and also in, in uh, Peru to see Machu Picchu and other sites there in South America and also to train to be a, a tour director for the Holy Land where we have visited uh, Italy and Egypt, and also Israel. And so since 1994 is when I went on my first uh, training to be a tour director, a 24-day trip, um, learned an awful lot. And ever since 94, I've off and on, except for during COVID time. We and were, while you were a mission president. Uh, yeah, those three years that I was in Peru, uh, we have been directing tours and it's just a wonderful pastime, a wonderful hobby, I guess you could call that. But it's just, it's not my work, but it's something we really enjoy doing is, is especially uh, seeing other places. So, yeah, it's been a lot of trips. Uh, and we're really looking forward to this uh, trip to Rome. I was just going to say, so you you were planning this trip to Israel and you had it all done. And I said, Roger, I've got this trip to Rome, and a lot of people have enjoyed adding Rome onto an Israel tour. What do you think about that? And you're like, yes, please count me in. <laughs> and you were you were really excited from the moment I mentioned it. What what about Rome and the places you're going to visit really excites you that you're excited to share well, with people? It's it's the history, uh, so much history there from the Roman Empire that took in three different continents, for example, 50 to 90 million people they calculated in the Roman Empire and the influence the Roman Empire has had on basically the world. But then when you look at it in a, in a scriptural point of view, like when we go to Israel, the Holy Land, we spend a lot of time in the Old and the New Testament. We learn about the Talmud and other things uh, and, and cultures and histories and things like that. But we also zero in on scripture and and when you read in the New Testament, there's quite a bit of uh, mention of of Rome and Paul and Peter and and their visits there. So, yeah. uh, absolutely, there's there is so much, and um, it's a favorite place. I I get giddy when I get into Italy in general, and um, and it's not just about the gelato, um, which is um, a, always a highlight. Um, or the street pizza or the pasta or any of the other wonderful things. But you're right, the history, standing in actual places that um, 
that we know that the apostles were, and we know the history. There's so much amazing history. Um, so, well, I'm, I'm excited that you're excited to share this information <laughs> with us. So what, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about this tour specifically because it does hit the highlights of Rome, but also a couple of exciting day tours. So I'm going to let okay. you go ahead and, and kind of walk through some of your pictures you have. And please, uh, if you have questions, I'll definitely make. Yeah, I'm, right. I'll, I'm watching chat. So, okay. So, uh, we will arrive in Rome, and if you're interested in an itinerary, we definitely, I could send that to you at a drop of a hat, but we're going to go into Rome, very ancient city. Um, we'll visit Naples, which is the home of the place of pizza, <laughs> by the way. And there's a nice story behind all that, but we won't take the time to talk about the history of pizzas, but uh, but it's a, it's a tender, it's kind of a touching story. And then we will visit Pompeii. You'll see in Naples this, this mountain here like a volcano. Uh, you'll see that in 79 AD, this city of Pompeii was destroyed by that uh, nearby volcano. Can you imagine 19 feet, six meters of ash and other volcanic debris that, that piled itself on the, on the city? And it was known as a quick burial. And it was been, as mentioned here, preserved in the, it, it, for centuries before the ruins were discovered in the late 16th century. So well, that's a fascinating place there in Naples. We'll go to Tuscany. You can see how beautiful the landscape is. You know what? I, I, I hate to stop you there, but it doesn't look like our slides are progressing. I wonder if maybe you click over here and let's see if, if this is changing um, on the displays. Apologize. Give us one That's moment. Right. It, it looks like we're, we're having a little bit of uh, technical problems. Let's see if we can get so, that. Uh, because really, pictures do... What is it? A picture's worth a thousand words. Now, let me stop the screen share and I'll start that again. Okay. Uh, Martha, can can you hear us well? And because I see you're you're not muted. Actually, uh, let's see. Oh, that's right. Let's see, Martha. I mean, Terry, could you unmute and give us a little response? Can you hear and see what we're showing? I can hear you. All we could see is the first slide. Is the first slide. Okay. So it wasn't progressing. Right? Yeah, it was it wasn't progressing. Let so me let's do the screen share again. Okay, let's go. And let's uh no. Nope, okay, that's the same slide there. Yeah, it's it's let's see. Why don't you open the PowerPoint? It's good well, this one. And just uh how about this one? Yep. Look, there we, go. there we go. I'm so sorry. All right. Now we're on to Rome. Isn't that a beautiful over picture? Yeah. It's a beautiful day there. Okay. Sorry. Go so ahead. after that, <laughs> no, that's, please, <laughs> any of you comment, uh, Naples, the home of the, of, of the pizza. And then you can see that volcano that in 79 AD covered the entire city with 19 feet of volcanic ash and other debris. And they call it the city's quick burial. And so we'll visit, visit that area, but it wasn't discovered until the 16th century. Then we'll go on to uh, Tuscany, beautiful landscape, a place known for its history, the art, uh, high culture, the birthplace of the Italian Renaissance and the foundation of the Italian language. Because before, during the Roman Empire, we know it was Latin, but the founding foundations of the Italian language was in Tuscany. Beautiful, beautiful place. We'll visit Florence, noted for its culture, agriculture, or architecture, and great monuments. You know, I'm just going to insert a little thing. Yeah. One of the things that I think is super fun about this tour, and it's just because I'm an adventurer at heart, we're actually taking the um, 
the bullet train oh, yeah. from Rome up to Florence. So this is actually going to be a train journey and it's actually called the Ferrari train. It's the speed train. So we're going to leave Rome and we're yeah. going to take the train up to Florence. So you guys are going to be going um, through the countryside up on uh, the train and getting a real great experience. And it drops you right there at the heart of Florence, right as you walk into that amazing area. So back so. To here, So with Rome here, then we'll take that bullet train or the yeah. Ferrari. The Ferrari. If you've ever been on a Ferrari, this is uh, this is your this is your chance to be on a Ferrari in Italy. <laughs> so Rome to Florence. So we'll go back to some pictures. You can see those now. Good. Now, and then we'll come back to Rome, which very excited about this Roman Colosseum. Just a little bit of information on it: travertine, limestone, volcanic rock, and brick-faced concrete. Uh, imagine 50 to 80,000 spectators, and it's one of the new seven wonders of the world. It's fascinating, and we have some fun facts that we will share about the Colosseum, about Rome. About the Christian persecution yeah. and, and the, 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 the torture that happened. And the animals, the countless, it's a it's a, a place where a lot of animals were slaughtered. The number is just phenomenal. It's just terrible how many animals. Um, then we'll go to the Roman Forum. This is a fascinating place. You know, founded in uh, uh, the 8th century BC up to 606. Uh, uh, original marketplace, a, a center for day-to-day -day life. And there, there, uh, there's a great history that we we want to share there. I'm sure the local guide will share a lot of history, but uh, I, I I want to provide the people with some materials, like fun facts about all of these places uh, prior to going, so that you can learn more and more. And it's just fascinating. Well, so. one of the things that I actually love about the forum is, like in all cities. The city of that the Roman cities that we think about are are so far underground. You have to go, you know, deep underground because the new cities yes. have, and have all been built up on top of it. When you're walking the Forum, you're actually on the same level that the apostles were walking on down to the prison. They were. They, this is where the shops were. This is where the Roman legions were marching through. You're on that level when you're yeah. in the forum. I mean, this is one of those places. And you see here the Constantine Arch. We can talk about that. But as as Wendy indicated, about ten percent of of actual Rome is visible. The rest is about thirty feet below. Mm, it covered up good. and built up. So yeah, I love that fact. So the Trevi Fountain, Trevi is uh, three, Trev is, Trey is three, and V is Baia, or uh, three roads that come together. And um, built in the 18th century, one of the most famous fountains in the world. If you throw one coin, you'll come back. If you throw two coins, you'll find a lover. And if you point, throw three coins, you'll marry that person. So... And I just a fun little fact that they gather one point five million dollars <laughs> worth of coins. It's about three thousand dollars a day. That's how many people want to come back to Rome. Yeah. And how many people want, want to get married? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But what's interesting, they have a charity, and all that money is gathered and put on shopping cards for a supermarket for food to give to the poor. I love that. And and that's a that that's a fun thought. There are people. There was this one man who for thirty four years would sneak and steal money, and they finally caught him after thirty four years. Wow! But they have a really good security over this, so just a, a fun little place to visit. But so so beautiful. This next place, um, Pantheon. Pan means all, and Theo is gods. So it's a place for all gods. Now, this ocular up here, as you go inside, the distance from, now this really boggled my mind when I read about it and saw it. 
the top of the of this uh, the roof to the floor is a hundred and uh, I think it's 160 uh, something feet. I'll have to double check my notes. And the distance of the ocular is the same distance from the roof to the floor. So that it, that that boggles my mind. But when you get in there, it's just amazing, amazing. And it's on a really fun piazza. I think that is one of the things that I love so much about Rome is people watching. And when you go to the fountains and you sit on the fountains oh. and you watch everybody walk through. And uh, I think that's one of my one of my favorite things to do is to go to one of these wonderful squares. It, and the good thing about this trip, you'll see in the itinerary, you'll have free time to just walk around and visit, poke your head in here and foods and, and whatnot. It's just a a beautiful, beautiful experience. And, and what people will experience if you haven't been to Rome um, or when you get there is how comfortable you feel there. You know, um, it's a it's a major city, and um, but it is wonderful to be able to go and explore. I think it, it it's not, to me, it was not intimidating. No, people I, are... I went to this gelato stand, took a right and went down to the next gelato, took a left. <laughs> And I found Trevi. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> gelato, 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 Trevi. Yes, right? just like that. <laughs> okay. I'll write down the instructions for your group. <laughs> so this uh, Pantheon, as you see, was dedicated. It was it had some structure repairs needed. It was re reconstructed. But uh, the, the, let's say the four is original, but, uh, but, but a place for all the gods. Imagine how long it has survived. Yeah. Interesting. The Vatican City is the smallest country in the world. It's a country within a country, a state within a state. And uh, founded in 1929, headquarters of the church, Roman uh, Catholic Church. We go to the Sistine Chapel, Pope Sixtus or Sisto or Sistine, built between 1473 and 1481. Official residence of the Pope today, and you'll see uh, between these dates, Michelangelo painted the chapel ceiling, which is amazing. I was going to say, going into the Sistine Chapel is just one of those places that you almost need to bring a neck pillow because you just, <laughs> you, you stand yeah. like this with or, your neck. And, or lay down. Or, or, and uh, uh, yeah, well, if you lay down, you're going to get trampled <laughs> on because of the amount of people that they, they do let into this room. But I always think it's interesting, like when they're electing their new popes, that it is here in the Sistine Chapel, that that's happening. And it's so interesting to, to be told about that process, or many of us have lived through you know multiple selections and and that it was there and then of course my favorite part other than seeing the Sistine Chapel of being at the Vatican is going into at uh, the Basilica and seeing the art and the sculptures um Michelangelo's uh Pieta and just it's overwhelming it actually brings tears to your eyes I think at least I'm yeah. not I'm not a big art person but I'll tell you what that's why when we go to the Vatican we're there for half a day and you have a half a day on your own because if you need to stay there and absorb it all, you can do that. Your admission has been paid. If you want to go back into the museum and take in more of that history, you can do that. Your admission is paid. Or if you're ready to move on, you can get on down the go road. Get a gelato. Go get a gelato. <laughs> That's funny. It is amazing. It's just an amazing place. So let's go to the next one. For those who are members of the church, this this is a free day. We can go to the temple, the Rome temple, or uh, have a free day in the in the downtown area. Yeah, go and walk. There's so many museums. Again, if you're a museum person, you know, going over to um, the Borghese galleries or or there is some really ancient catacombs and things like you can you can do. But going to uh, this beautiful temple that was just dedicated a um, what a year before the pandemic, yeah, two thousand nineteen, and it's the the story behind this temple is phenomenal. I love the picture that you have here of the Christus and the um, uh, apostles behind him, which was all taken from the original Carrera. Um, marble quarry mm -hmm. in uh, out by Pisa, see north of uh, up by Pisa, northern Italy, and um, exact replicas. 
as the originals. Amazing. Yeah. So um, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about Paul, the apostle of the Lord and his experiences. You can see that the Roman Empire took in three different continents. You got Africa, Europe, and Asia. As I mentioned, 50 to 90 million. See, Italy didn't come into existence until the late 1800s or early 1900s. And Italy uh, and Rome wasn't the capital at first. It was uh, uh, the uh, up in northern western part, uh, the Shroud of Turin. In, in Turin, Italy, it was the yeah. first capital of, of Italy. Right. So anyway, just we'll spend a little bit of time about talking about Paul, maybe on an evening gathering for those who would like to, but but basically that's that's this fun and exciting, very exciting tour. So please, if you have questions or any comments, uh, unmute yourself and would love to to entertain. I was going to say, and that's one of the things that um, having the free time is also something, you know, some people like having free time and going out and exploring on their own. There's some fabulous shopping. Um, again, the museums, the people watching the, you know, going through the different fountains and things like that. But if you're not a person who likes to um, go and explore on your own, there's going to be um, a ton of suggestions and you and your wife are going on so uh, with the trip and I know that um, you'll uh, love to have people tag along on some Absolutely. of your adventures on on your free time too so some people had asked on on the tour when we go to the Rome temple um the 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 new temple over there um, that there is a session booked for those who have recommends and want to go in and serve that is absolutely something that uh, you're going to be able to do and we do that on a lot of our tours mm -hmm. to rome um, or italy in general that get to spend time there in rome um and that is there's a, a chat down there and then also getting to have time to um to go to the visitor center because one of my most favorite things to do um, at the visitor center is look at the amazing stained glass that was done by yes. the Holdmans. Uh, Tom Holdman did this amazing stained glass, which has all the miracles. And um, if you look really close, there's very specific faces that you're going to recognize of the people who worked on the stained glass. There's a fabulous book about the stained glass at the temple. Um, you will see faces like, um, well, besides Tom Holman, the artist himself and his wife, you're going to see Brad Wilcox. You're going to see um, Anthony Sweat. You're going to see... Um, oh, I'm trying to remember some of the other ones. It's just so interesting to see if you can pick out the faces and like which one that they're in, the children, and it's just fantastic. So there was a question if they do rent temple clothing, and they do, and it's fantastic. This is a temple that is there, not necessarily because there's not enough saints in Rome to justify having this amazing temple. And they know that the, that is a transient type temple and there's many people visiting. I will tell you something that's a little funny. We had a, a tall slender man come in and need to rent temple clothing. They did not have anything for a tall slender man. And he said uh, that he had to wear uh, a pair of pants that they had on hand that uh, was about six inches too big on his waist and six inches too short on the length. But it was okay because he was able to go into the temple and he did not mind. So that's something that I like to tell people. When you go to the Rome Temple, you can rent. Um, but if you have a special size that maybe you're a little concerned about, you might want to um, to bring something, you know, tuck that into your um, into your luggage because it might be uh, something that uh, will be will be you'll be grateful that you have tucked away. Yeah, about that stain you're talking about the stained glass. We have that we have that artwork above our bed in our in our bedroom. Do we you? Love it so much. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Like I said. There's a wonderful book on it, and there is so much for Rome. So we're excited about your tour that you're doing. 
Um, I'm just going to go ahead and mention, take this opportunity to tell people, we have got several tours this year that are going to be going to Rome um, and include Rome. One of them, you know, this year on the Come Follow Me, we're doing the New Testament. And that's one of the things that's so cool about visiting this part of the world. We actually have a tour with Dan Hone who is, um, again, a, phen a phenomenal tour guide, and he is doing the journey of the apostles. And this one actually starts in Turkey. It has a three-night, four-day cruise through the Greek Isles, um, and it goes into Athens, and then it ends in Rome. And so that one is really cool, and it's in the fall. Mm -hmm. We also have a tour in the fall called The Splendors of Italy. And this one is actually uh, starts in Venice, and then it travels down to Florence, um, and it uh, will stop in Ravenia and some of these beautiful little places in Tuscany. And it actually does go to that prayer of marble quarry, and they get to see where Michelangelo got his marble from and all the marble from the temple. And um, then next year in 24, I'm super excited about an opportunity that I get to take a group that's just going to be on a Star Clipper cruise, which is a cell ship. It uh, only holds 160 people. It goes round trip out of Rome and uh, sells down the Amalfi Coast to the toe tip of um, Sicily. And then it comes back up and, and you stop some, along some of those wonderful towns on the Amalfi. And one of the, the cool things about the Star Clipper Cruise is it's one of those ships that it just stops in a bay and you get to jump off the ship and you get to just have some wonderful adventures. So it's, um, it's a pretty cool thing, but we love Italy not just the gelato and the food, but the history. And we love it for what it means to people. I'm actually uh, Italian by marriage, um, but my husband's only a second generation uh, American. And so we do some wonderful genealogy when we're there too, because if anybody's had to do genealogy for an Italian family, it um, it is very difficult. So it's also something wonderful to do. So we really appreciate you guys sharing a little bit of time with us. And we thank you guys for your questions. And we really hope that uh, whether it's this tour or one of our other tours or just on your own, when you get to go and, and visit Italy and especially Rome, that you take the time to do some of these amazing different trips. And we hope you learned something. And uh, again, we just really appreciate you being with us today. So thank you so much. And um, we, uh, we will see you next Wednesday where we're actually going to be doing another webinar um, specifically on that apostle tour that um, we were talking about with Dan Holmes. So thank you again, and everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.